In this, part two of our analysis of advanced battery technologies, we will cover additional information that, in light of our other findings, represents compelling evidence in support of our thesis that ABAT is defrauding U.S. investors. On December the 20th of 2010, ABAT announced that it would acquire a Shenzhen-based battery maker for approximately $20 million. The name of that company is Shenzhen ZQ New Energy Science and Technology Company Limited, or what we will refer to as Shenzhen ZQ. But based on court documents we have obtained, ABAT had already bought this business in 2008 for $1 million, but it did not disclose this purchase at that time to public investors. This is the acquisition agreement that shows that Shenzhen ZQ was sold to ABAT in August of 2008 for only $1 million. This document is attached as an exhibit in the case documents related to, to the case of Sui Yang Huang versus ABAT. Corroborating our, fi our findings, ABAT CEO Zigu Fu became the legal representative of Shenzhen ZQ in September of 2008, as can be seen in the screenshot of the Shenzhen AIC registration website. This is the English translation. No aspect of this acquisition was disclosed in SEC filings in 2008 or 2009, which itself is materially fraudulent. When public companies make acquisitions, they are required to disclose them in SEC filings due to their materiality and relevance to investors. ABAT did not do so. But the main idea is this. ABAT paid $1 million for a business in 2008 and kept it on the low. Then, in 2010, it announced to the public that it was going to buy this same business, again, one it had already bought, but this time for $20 million. This is $19 million more than ABAT actually paid in 2008 to purchase the same company. And it appears to be an attempt to funnel investor funds out of the company. We've seen numerous situations where fraudulent Chinese reverse takeover companies use acquisitions as justifications to transfer cash from public shareholders to related parties. Somebody seems to be getting rich here and is doing so at the expense of ABAT investors. Since advanced batteries inception, management has made numerous claims regarding relationships with suppliers, distributors, research partners, and other related parties. As part of our due diligence process, we have attempted to contact most of the relevant parties in order to verify the existence of a business relationship. In the case of Vikan USA, ABAT grossly stretched the truth. On October the 16th of 2008, ABAT issued this press release announcing a five-year contract that would generate $27 million in revenue with an entity named Vikan USA, to which it would supply 10,000 battery modules per month. Read the highlighted portion carefully. ABAC claims that Vikan USA is a multi-billion dollar corporation, which would make the size of this contract appear legitimate. In actuality, Vikan USA is a tiny entity run by only a few people. We should note that there does exist a multi-billion dollar company that goes by the name Vikan. That company is not Vikan USA. That company is Vikan Group, which is based in China. But Vikan USA and Vikan Group are not related entities, as evidenced in a letter we have obtained from the Vikan Group in which it denies any association with Vikan USA. ABAT's press release is based on a lie. It gets worse. Nine months after the previously discussed press release and in connection with the same contract, an unrelated U.S.-based firm, which would take ultimate del delivery of Wuxi Electric Cycles for distribution in the United States, filed a lawsuit against ABAT, claiming that the electric scooters delivered from ABAT were not even saleable in the U.S. because they didn't meet the necessary U.S. EPA standards, they weren't properly registered or didn't contain proper VIN numbers, they didn't meet U.S. safety requirements, they weren't manufactured or assembled in a workmanlike manner, which re requiring immediate work or repairs upon receipt. This lawsuit is additional proof of the low quality and defective nature of Bushi's products, which has been a general theme that has been corroborated numerous times throughout our research process. Yet, according to ABAT's financial statements, 
the company was able to turn around the Wuxi operations from a factory unable to create products in a, quote, workmanlike manner in 2009 to a company generating 32% segment EBIT margins in 2010. We think this is very highly unlikely. While we believe that Wuxi ZQ does sell electric scooters and scooter parts in some shape or form, we're highly doubtful of the unit's sales and profit figures as reported in the, in the United States to the SEC. As we wrote previously, ABAD executives are either superhuman turnaround experts or they are liars. We suspect it's the latter, as has been corroborated in conversations with ABAT customers. In many cases, the parties we have contacted have either been non-existent, non-locatable, unwilling to speak, or had something strongly negative to say about ABAT. In multiple cases, we found customers who either came away from their visits to the company's factories unimpressed or confident that the company was inflating its financial figures. In our report, we provide a link to a recording with one such customer. This customer himself stated that he thought about contacting the SEC to report ABAT for fraudulent claims made in press releases. We encourage you to listen to that conversation. But this frustration is not isolated to just one customer. Other customers have been in touch with, we've been in touch with have voiced similar op opinions of ABAT. For example, in 2010, ABAT tout touted an agreement to re-enter the U.S. market, expecting to deliver 2,000 electric scooter units to All Power America for $1.1 million. Only half the delivery was taken before serious issues surfaced regarding quality control and licensing. An excerpt of our dialogue can also be found in our written report. And in conjunction with the evidence from the Beacon Scooter case, which we just discussed, we see how management has twice now produced excessively optimistic press releases announcing the release of ABAT brand products into the United States. Each time, they have sent inferior, unusable products and left customers on the hook. This compares to the language provided by Zigu Fu, ABAT CEO, in the, in the press release announcing the relationship with All Power. He states that entering the U.S. market is a very important milestone for ABAT and notes the, rec the recognition ABAT's electric vehicles are receiving all around the world. In light of the su substantial evidence that ABAT is a fraud, high CFO and, and auditor turnover can be considered yet another symptom. On average, ABAT has lost either a CFO or auditor more than once per year. This is a table documenting the company's CFO and auditor turnover. Losing a CFO or auditor at least once a year is not normal. Rather, it's a sign of potential fraud. The company's history of auditors has been equally disappointing. This table displays ABAT's history of auditors. None of the company's auditors have been ranked in the top 100 global auditors at the time of ABAT's hiring. Bagel Joseph's Levine & Company, LLC, was acquired by Friedman LLP in 2010, but Friedman resigned as ABAT's auditor in less than a year. The company's current auditor is EF, EFP Rottenberg. Rottenberg & Company, which merged with the EFP Group in 2009, received a PCAOB inspection in 2008 which among other things noted certain audit deficiencies, one of which was of such significance that it appeared to the inspection team that the firm hadn't obtained sufficient evidential matter to support its opinion on the issuer's financial statements. Unfortunately, auditors are fallible. U.S. listed Chinese frauds make money by issuing shares to foreign investors. If it wasn't for the fact that public investors are losing or stand to lose millions of dollars, the situation would almost be laughable. Despite the fact that management is reporting more than enough cash on the balance sheet to fund operations and significant expansion, and despite the fact that no responsible management team would sell shares in a fast-growing, high-margin, cash-rich business for less than 12 times earnings, ABAT issues shares on a very regular basis. This is a graphical depiction of ABAT's egregious share dilution, an annotated timeline de demonstrating the company's share issuance. From July 12th of 2004, the date of its reverse merger, management began an excessive dilution campaign. They did this by issuing shares in public offerings, paying for acquisitions with shares, and paying management with shares. This is a graphical comparison of the share count to ABAT stock price and trailing P.E. ratio. 
As we can see, the heavy dilution has resulted in a stagnating stock price over the past few years, despite the increased reported earnings per Bloomberg. We can also see from this graph that ABAT has been issuing shares at irrationally low valuation multiples. For a company that supposedly grew revenue from $4.2 million in 2005 to $63.6 million in 2009, paying even 15 times earnings creates terrible dilution for shareholders. Yet in its most recent capital raise, management was willing to sell shares for less than 12 times trailing earnings. If the capital was, out, was absolutely necessary to build out facilities, it might be justifiable. But over the same span of time, ABAT reportedly has grown cash from $18,000 to $53 million. As of the third quarter, it had a cash balance of $74.3 million. It's hard to argue they needed additional cash. Likewise, PP&E has grown from $11.9 million to $47.2 million, and intangibles have grown from $528,000 to $14.3 million. Therefore, for every dollar either raised in the capital markets or earned, only 50 cents was spent. And with only $21.8 million of purported operating cash flow between 2008 and 2009, we can guess where most of the money came from. U.S. investors. This degree of share dilution is completely unjustifiable. Even the most forgiving shareholder can only draw the conclusion that management has continually ignored its fiduciary responsibility to investors since day one. Any rational investor, realizing that this is how frauds steal money, would look at this track record and see a smoking gun. Fraud is not an American problem or a Chinese problem. It's a greed problem that arises when trust or hope replace critical thinking. ABAT management has lied on their financial statements. The fabrications are so extraordinary that ABAT appears to be the single most productive and efficient battery manufacturer in the world, despite its small economies of scale and relative obscurity. More likely, ABAT's operations are a small fraction of the size of the company's claims. The information provided to investors regarding customers, partners, and suppliers has been tracked, and in many circumstances has led to dead-end to a dead end or a ruined relationship. The fraud hypothesis is furthermore supported by what appears to be a fraudulent transfer of investor assets, exaggerated claims made by, man made by management, the long list of CFOs and accountants, and topping it off, the never-ending share dilution for no clear purpose. ABAT stock is not a true equity claim on the free cash flows of a business. It is a liability to ABAT investors. We reiterate our view that the stock is worthless and that ABAT should be delisted from the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Please refer to our written report for additional evidence.